If you at all follow the world of video games, you've probably heard of Arcade 1UP. Three quarter size arcades licensed from original popular arcade titles. Each cabinet comes with one or more classic titles and are designed to resemble the original cabinets they emulate. People have a lot of opinions on arcade 1UP cabinets and it causes a lot of arguments over authenticity, accessibility, specifically in online communities. But having owned original arcade cabinets before, it's nice to have a framework to own or customize an arcade cabinet for relatively little money and without needing to build your own cabinet or repurpose original hardware. Let's get into modding an arcade cabinet in 2023. Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Ty, Tynology, Tynology Gaming. This is what I built. I call it the Retro Arcade Party. If you want to have an arcade in your home, you have a few options. Arcade 1UP, building your own or repurposing an original cabinet from an arcade machine. Now let's talk about the Arcade 1UP. Now they come in big boxes, very heavy. I had to pull these up the stairs because the elevators are broken here. And you get these like MDF panels. It's not the highest quality. For the price you pay, it's actually not too bad. It takes a few hours to put it together. It's a fun project. I did it with my son last time. I have two arcade one-up cabinets. I have this NBA Jam and I have the Simpsons. Both are four player cabinets. You run into issues because with four players, you don't have a whole lot of room for buttons. And so the NBA Jam is a three button per player. The Simpsons is only two buttons per player with a trackball in the middle for the bowling game. Another thing you should know about arcade one-up cabinets is that depending on the generation, there's different quality variances. And so, for example, I think it's the legacy cabinets. There's some generation where the screens are much worse than all the other ones. And it's not really easy to find this information online. Most of the people who know what's going on are inside of Arcade 1UP groups or on Reddit. There's not a whole lot of resources pulled together from the people that know what they're talking about. And one thing you should know is that playing the cabinets stock, aside from sometimes you have to update them, it's generally a good experience. They have online play now, which is really cool. I was playing Simpsons online with Beach Pizza Gaming. Now, before we move on, I wanna talk about some solutions that you can use to modify your cabinet. There are drop-in solutions where you just plug it in. It's like a whole new deck and you just plug it in. It's a really quick install. Those are several hundred dollars and I don't have experience with them. Some people swear by them, but I didn't want to go that route because it limits on the customization and stuff like that. Now, I have to say something and get it out there. Modding your Arcade 1UP cabinet isn't really modding your Arcade 1UP cabinet. It's basically gutting it and putting all new parts inside of it down to the buttons and the joysticks. The reason being is everything is fairly proprietary or you need a lot of adapters and the quality isn't the best. And so you're better off just getting new parts anyway. Besides the shell of the cabinet, the one thing that I did repurpose is the screen because the screen actually looks really good. So the parts that you need to convert, I'll say convert your arcade one up cabinet is some type of brain. Either it's a Raspberry Pi or a PC or some sort of computer, something to put your image on, put your ROMs, everything that controls it. The other thing you need is a video converter board. I'll have links to everything in the description. This is the one I bought. Oops. And the problem is it works, but it cuts off the bottom because turns out different generations of arcade one-up cabinets have different aspect ratios. So since this is a generation three cabinet, it actually has a four by three screen, which is 1280 by 960 instead of 1280 by 1024. This is a 1280 by 1024, five by four converter card. It cuts off the bottom of the screen. So I had to get another one that's running in there now. Beware of that. I'll link both depending on which model you have. I think those are the only two resolutions. I can't figure it out. Can't, I look online, I can't find it. I don't know what model, what cabinet you have. Next up is the, all the switches, the joysticks, they're Sanwa clones. They're much better than the stock ones. They light up, which is cool. The one thing is because you usually need more buttons, you need coin buttons, you need uh, start buttons. 
You sometimes you need more face buttons for fighting games and stuff like that. I started to drill and uh, to test to see if I wanted to add more buttons. I gave up. I did drill four coin buttons on the front because it was plastic and I didn't have to drill through acrylic, which I was worried about cracking the top uh, acrylic, but that worked great and I love it. I will add more buttons eventually. The other thing is it comes with these encoder boards that you'll have to know what order to put all the buttons in. Continuing, you need software. So I bought a $99 PC from eBay, a Dell small form factor PC. I knew it would run everything that I wanted to run. I put in an SSD that I got for $25 on Black Friday or something at one terabyte. And it's and I loaded up. What I downloaded was an image called CoinOps Collections. It's a brand new arcade front end. It uses Retro FE, but it kind of pre-configures everything and it kind of makes it try to be as turnkey as possible. It never really is because you have to customize some controls. I actually, the format for all the layouts is all 16 by nine. So I had to go into some XML files and actually readjust positions of different elements to make it work for a four by three. It worked great. I was very, very impressed with myself. Yeah, they were very critical. Like this is only for 16 by nine. That scared me off, but it wasn't that hard. It took me maybe an hour to just modify all those locations, push everything in a little bit and make sure that the resolution was uh, 1280 by 960. With any of this stuff, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of tinkering. There's a lot of thank you. you have to deal with. It's never gonna work exactly as you want it. So just be prepared for that. You can also use a RetroPie or like a Raspberry Pi. The reason I didn't do that was I actually bought a Raspberry Pi 3 like a year and a half ago. And then I realized everything was going to uh, Raspberry Pi 4 and that I want to make sure that I could run all the stuff I wanted to run on it. So I was going to go buy a Ra Raspberry Pi 4 and you can't find them. They're like either impossible to find or they're like several hundred dollars for some stupid reason. I know there's a chip shortage, but come on, it's a Raspberry Pi 4. In case you're wondering, this is the board that the NBA Jam runs on. I think it's a Linux single chip board and it's very, very low power, just enough to run NBA Jam emulated. So that's what you have to rip off. Pull that off, use the power for the video encoder, plug the PC in, run a power strip out, plug in all my USB encoders for my buttons and joysticks, and that's about it. Now some accessories. I did add some RGB lighting, a sound bar, because the stock speakers, you need a converter to output from the HDMI. Wasn't gonna deal with that because the stock speakers suck anyway. So I put a little sound bar on top, works great. The other thing I did was I went and got this really cool keyboard and trackpad and it works fantastic. I can turn it on and off. It's uh, 2.4 gigahertz. I can even adjust the volume from here. If I ever need a keyboard or mouse, I don't have to have a full setup on my arcade. What's next? I want to add more buttons because right now I'm kind of stuck playing beat em ups, shoot em ups, some really retro stuff. I can't really touch any of the fighting games because usually you need at least four, sometimes six buttons to play those fighting games. I'll, I'm not sure how many buttons I'm gonna add. I don't play a lot of fighting games, but it'd be nice to be able to do that. I'd love to configure more games because this image has like 3000 games on it and they're all really high quality. There's all artwork, there's videos, uh, we have everything. I wanna configure those and make sure they run perfectly. Add to my favorites list, stuff like that. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna fix the lighted LED panel because that also needs separate power. There is a splitter that I can use to convert the normal power or I might just stick a big light in there, but I have to take it apart a little bit. So that's something I wanna do because I lost power to the light for the behind the NBA Jam. Speaking of, I would love to put new graphics all over it and make it maybe like a Tynology themed arcade or just make it a little, little more minimal. I'm not a huge basketball fan. I love NBA Jam, but I don't need like NBA Jam artwork everywhere. I'd love to do something more custom. And I know Etsy, places like that have people do custom graphics for it. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the software. So it's CoinOps Collections. It has everything. It has arcade. It, it sorts by different types of arcade, like retro, classics, shoot 'em ups, beat 'em ups, fighting games, racing games. And then it has all the consoles. It has these collections for like Capcom and Nintendo and Neo Geo. So you get all that stuff. It's like 3,000 games. And then there's other add on packs that has, they have a lot of pirated software. So I'd advise against that. 
with arcade ROMs and stuff like that, I know it's a little bit of a gray area because you can't really own those. And it's also, it's not like you're gonna go out and buy them. So I recommend have fun with these, but when you get a chance, go visit a local arcade, whether it's a locally owned one or even like Dave and Buster's or something. Those are the places that are buying new arcade hardware from these companies. And if all these arcades close down, then we're gonna be stuck with what we have and we're never gonna get anything new. Like it's already happening. And so whenever you get a chance, go visit your local arcade, even out your karma with downloading these ROMs from the 80s and 90s. That said, there are other options for front ends. There's, I know there's LaunchBox and all sorts of stuff. I didn't do a ton of research. I just found CoinOps and I went for it because I saw a lot of people raving about it. I saw a lot of YouTube videos about it and I thought it was just a good, option for me. I'll link down to a site called Arcade Punks that has a lot of options if you want to really dig in and see what all the options are for it. So what about you? Do you have an Arcade 1UP machine? Would you mod it or whatever, completely gut it and put all new hardware in it? Let me know in the comments. It's good to be back. I have more videos coming out soon. Thank you for watching. Cheers.